The AT Pro comes standard with the 8.5-11 Double D search coil, but Garrett does offer optional search coils for the AT. There are two concentric search coil styles. One is a larger 9x12 and then a smaller 6.5x9. And then there's also a super sniper coil for very tight areas and searching in kind of trash ridden areas where there might be a lot of iron debris. The concentric coils give you good depth. They're very good when you're hunting grounds where it's very neutral soil, where you don't have a lot of iron mineralization. So what we'll do here is I'm gonna take uh, the six and a half by nine, I'm gonna put it on my AT, and I'm gonna go hunt some of the playing fields out here and just demonstrate uh, the good depth and the easy pinpointing ability that this concentric coil has as an, as an option. Well, I'm hunting in uh, standard mode and I'm just looking for good repeatable signals. Something that sounds good, really worth digging. Some of these are kind of bouncing around a little bit. I can of course put on the iron audio and I hear a little bit of a grunt there so I'm going to pass that one by. I know that that's going to be some junk. Still a lot of targets around here, a lot of junk metal. You know, I can watch the cursor dancing around even with my iron to scrum on and see that a lot of junk in the ground, but I just want to again get a good repeatable signal. That'd be something I would dig for sure. That sounds better. Go back and forth. Uh, I'm hitting 70, high, 78. There's junk right near it though, so as I get away from it, I'm seeing some iron, but when I go right over that, that sounds good. 82, 83, so the iron that's around it's affecting it a little bit, but clearly there's a good conductive target right there, so let's dig that and see. I can tell there's other stuff around it, but that should be a coin or something good. moved it. Ah, that's a penny. Nineteen sixty-three, sixty-five, nineteen sixty-three. So you could hear that that was a good uh, sound, very repeatable, even though right in this vicinity near it, I know there's some little bits of foil or some iron junk but it's just a matter of getting on that consistent sound. You know, the digital ID is more consistent. Even though it's jumping a little bit with the stuff around it, you will get a good read on something like that. Let's see if we can find some old silver now, maybe. Well, it's fairly deep. I have to dig out a little bit more here. It is a dime. It read higher. It was reading around 82, 84. And it looks like 1985. That was a good repeatable signal. A little bit deeper, about four inches maybe. Another dime. Somebody lost a couple dimes 
right close to each other, 1992. Again, that was a good solid read on that. So this uh, six and a half by nine is real nice on coins. junk in here, a lot of iron, but that's reading around 85 right there, so let's see what that is. Yeah, right there. Quarter, not even very deep. Now that shows you with that smaller six and a half by nine, I'm getting iron trash readings all around that, but uh, that quarter, you can really pick it out and it stands out. So uh, the concentric coil is doing a good job there. Yeah, there's a coin in there. It's a penny. You know, there's a lot of junk around in there, but you could again pick out that good repeatable signal. Boy, this thing's beat up. It's got the corners cut off it, and it's all kind of nicked up from you know, those probably lawnmowers and stuff over the years. But you could definitely uh, separate the targets even you know well enough to tell that there was something good in there even with the other trash that's present. To go back through here, there's still iron snapping and popping in there, but again, you know, we were able to pick out a good sound in the middle of some of that iron trash that's present here. <laughs> 